red plumage. Yeah. But most people these days they can't pluck them. You know, so they so you, know, they you sell them very dressy. So yeah. incidentally, if they don't sell particularly well, we send them out and they come back dress pheasants. Very oven and ready. I like the way oven they ready. keep their uh, the tail feathers. The tails. Tail oh, and mallards. Those are mallard ducks or yeah. the water ducks. Water Mostly the Chinese people. Yeah. Right, I yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then you have the uh, French partridge here. Yeah, this is what they call French the red leg partridge, aren't they? Yeah. The red leg. That's yeah. right. And then you have the small. Snipe. 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 That's yeah. a little thing, isn't it? There's hardly yeah, any meat on that. Yeah. Just enough for a sandwich, then. Just enough for a sandwich. <laughs> then you've got the hairs here. Yeah. Right. The hair. Small hairs actually called the leveret. A leveret. A small hair. Yeah, yeah. And a bigger hair is uh, about really twice as big as that. Well, we buy a lot of rabbits from you. Well, we have in the past yeah. as well, because uh, we make a lovely stew, don't we, yeah, with we make it with uh, We do this yeah. with red wine, Harry, and, uh, yeah, and lots of onions. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if your rabbit weighs a pound, you put a pound of onions. It's the same, yeah. the same yeah, ratio. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very uh, traditional Greek dish. OK, we're yeah. down here in the uh, fruit and vegetables section. Yeah. The Henshaws with uh, my friend here, Warren. Yeah. He's the main man down here. Hi, Warren. Hi. Well, Stuart comes every Tuesday and every Friday for the basic ingredients, yeah. don't we, that, yeah. that we use in our restaurant. But for specials, we're always looking for something different uh, to see what's fresh. And this is this is rocket, which is uh, a lovely uh, vegetable for salad, and it's got a peppery taste. Yeah. So this is nice, aren't they? And then you've got the beef tomatoes. Beef They're tomatoes, called beef yeah. tomatoes. No, yeah, They're lovely for stuffing, aren't they, those? The big one? Yeah, yes. And I see you've got some nice mushrooms. Yeah, what, what mushrooms are these oyster mushrooms? It's Italian oyster mushrooms. Oh, Italian oyster mushrooms. Yeah, they're lovely. Can I just take one out? Look at it. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. We're back in the kitchen and we're ready to make our main course, which is tifado, very popular dish made all over Greece and Cyprus. But first, let me introduce you Norma. Norma? Norma is, is going to help me to make this casserole because you make this every day, don't you? <laughs> every day. All right, let me run through the ingredients first. Of course, we're not making a lot today. We're just making a little bit just to show you how to make it really. So in here we've got two pounds of shin beef, cut into big pieces by normal, <laughs> and you need the same amount of onions and you slice them, thick, thickly sliced really, so you've got the same amount, 450 grams of each. We also need some other ingredients, we need some cinnamon sticks, some old spices, we need some orange peel, a couple of slices of that. We need some bay leaves. We need some two to three cloves of garlic, roughly chopped, as you can see. We also need just few uh, cloves. We're not going to use all these, just few of each. We also need some ground cinnamon. It's very aromatic uh, stew, isn't it, Norman? Yeah. And we need some sugar, some sauce, some tomato puree, uh, pepper of course, parsley, but very important, we need red wine, dry red wine and some vinegar and a little bit of water. And that's it really. Shall we start cooking? Yeah, why not? Right. In here you've got some oil, haven't you? I've got oil in here, yes. Vegetable oil. Yep. And you need to heat that first, don't you? Yes. Right, is it nearly ready? It is. All right. Start cooking. Ah, I like all that noise. Lovely. Now, it's very important to fry your meat really well. Yeah, you have to brown it. Yeah, it needs to go nice and brown, doesn't it? Yeah. And that takes you five minutes? Oh, five minutes to five brown minutes. it. That's all the meat sealed now, so we can take this out yes. and put it into a dish. Right. So we're ready for our onions now. Are you ready for the onions next, right. Lula? Shall I pass them to you, Norma? Yes, please. Let me finish getting the meat out. Norma, how much meat do you use a week for stifado? Approximately 40 pounds a week in the restaurant. Oh, Jesus. So this is like plain, isn't it? Oh, Plenty it's enough, enough, isn't it? Shall I have you? Yeah, yes. please, throw them in, Lula. Right, here we are. Now we have to seal all the onions. Yes. Now that takes a while, it Takes a while, it? that. Does it take longer than the meat? A lot longer. Yeah, so you're talking about 10 minutes? About 10 minutes, yeah. So we can have a cup of tea, maybe, while Why we're not? <laughs> 
My list will be ready now, Lula, so... All right, let's get rid let's of finish. my caps. Mmm, this oh, smells delicious. Onions, right? I love frying onions. Oh, I it do. Makes me hungry. Thank you, hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry all the time anyway. <laughs> do you want right. to get rid of that for me, please, All Lula? right. Thank you. So we're introducing the meat back into yep. the onions. And I suppose you need some uh, seasoning now. Yep, seasoning, tomato right. puree. Some salt, do you yeah. want to add it? Yeah. Ah, uh, the pepper for you, black pepper. Right, and you want some sugar? A little bit of sugar? Sugar, yes, please. Just a teaspoon. Ah, I'll do, yeah. Teaspoon of That's sugar. Lovely, that. Right, let's add the rest of the ingredients. Some cinnamon sticks, some whole cloves, yes. Just a few of those. And about some garlic. Oh, definitely do garlic. All the garlic in? Yep. Actually, it's better if I bring this nearer, you know. Yeah. Here we are. Tomato puree. Yeah, don't forget the tomato puree. Bay leaves. Let's try oregano. oregano. Dried you can oregano. Use fresh oregano as yeah, well, can you can use fresh if yes. you wish. And some ground cinnamon. Ground cinnamon? Yeah. We've got cinnamon sticks as well. Yeah, ground that's cinnamon what better. gives it uh, yep. that special flavour. There's with the bow our rosemary. Throw the rosemary. Forgetting about that. No, right, I don't forget. Mix all out there. Some mm. red wine. Red wine. Oh, a cup of red wine. A cup of red wine. Half, half a cup of vinegar. Yeah, any vinegar will do. And of course, a little bit of parsley. You put more parsley afterwards. Oh, afterwards, you? yeah. And now, how much water do we need now? Uh, just enough to cover the meat, Lila. All right. Tell me what I'm doing. Can you use stock? Is you can use stock, yeah. I do, actually. Yeah. yeah. Is that enough or a bit more? No, a then that should more. do it. Okay, so no. now. We'll cover it. Bring it to the boil. Bring it to the boil. Low heat. Cook it for about an hour and a half. Simmer it for one yep. and a half. And after one and a half hours? That's the finished product. Mmm. And it smells beautiful and it looks lovely. And it's better to eat it the following day, isn't it? Yeah. Not the same day. Once it's marinated overnight. Yeah. The flavour. Yeah. Tremendous. Great. Lovely. Hi and welcome back. Stuart and I are going to taste some Greek wines. testing first do you okay well Greek wines we have to start with Retsina don't we definitely angry <laughs> with you <laughs> now love this or hate this yes no. this is a very individual wine mm. and its distinctive flavor comes from the pine resin which in antiquity they used to seal the barrels with that's the Greek, right yeah and imparted the flavor to the wine and it developed a taste for it and, and now they actually flavor this uh, this wine with pine resin Mm, and you can smell well, it, it comes right you? through, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, I love retina. It smells like something to clean your yeah. teeth with, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of people say the only time they, they enjoy retina is when they're on holidays yeah. in Greece. It's definitely, definitely. You know. It's definitely a wine for sitting yeah. in the sun and drinking. Yeah. yeah. Why is that, do you think? I don't know. Is it, is it psychological? But it's beautiful fish, actually. Nothing with nicer fish, to yeah. sit in a, by the sea, a fish tavern, and a bottle of retina. <laughs> That's right. It's <laughs> lovely. Well, I, I like it. Well, I think it's a lovely wine. I like wine. it a lot, yeah. Yeah, but as you said, you either love it or you hate Correct. it. Correct. Right, what's this one, Stuart? Okay, now you've picked a good one here. This is, uh, yes, this is Cava Tansali. Mm, Cava, I yeah, know. Yeah, Cava. A Cava means bit. cave in Greek. That's right. Okay. Thanks for telling me. I'm a <laughs> Greek, you know. <laughs> anyway, this is, this, is a, um, this is a blend of the famous Greek grapes, Sino Mavro. Sino Mavro, Which yeah. means... Well, Xeno is um, uh, sharp, vinegary. sharp vinegary, I yeah. was going to think. But it, does, it doesn't sound nice no, when you say vinegar, does it? Vinegar, no, doesn't yeah, it? No. But, but that's what it actually right. means. But it's actually blended to, to, to turn that down with mm. the Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. And it's aged one year in oak mm. and two years in the bottle. Great. So let's... Oh, lovely colour. It's got a very sort of French feel to it, really, hasn't it? Hmm. I think so, yeah. yeah. The smell, especially. Yeah. I mean, the sharpness comes from that, the, the Sino Mavro grape, which yeah. is like a very acidy grape, really. I've not heard of Rapsani, no, actually. No, well, yes, well, I think it's, uh, it's from an old producer, Santalis. Yeah. Well, this is one of their new products yeah. that... And, um, and is it available here in Britain, this? this? Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. so all these wines we're looking at today are available. Yeah, they are available. Here, yeah. So it's another red, so yeah. I'll use the same glass. Okay, this is from Halkidiki, incidentally. Oh, I like Halkidiki. The We've been there, haven't we? Yeah, and we it's there. gorgeous. Gorgeous place, yeah. No, this is darker, isn't Slightly it? Slightly darker Slightly in, in hue, yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Nice. Oh, Stuart, it smells like expensive wine here. Mmm. What does it taste like, though? No. <laughs> well, you're the expert. 
There again, a little, a little thin, but very pleasant. I mean, yeah, I was uh, going to say. Yes, that's um, a drinking wine. You could drink that by the telly, couldn't mm. you? And for our last two, our Mavrodafne. Yes. Of course, yes. sweet wine. Sweet wine, this isn't is, it? This is more like communion wine. This communion. One, Shall I pour you this yeah. time? Come on. Okay. So nice. For a dessert one, yes, isn't this it? Yes, is a dessert it one. It is a dessert and it's one. It's very well known, Mother yeah. Daphne. Yeah. And actually, you know, they give it uh, in, um, in in church yes, for communion that's wine. Right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm used to that. You are, yeah. <laughs> Let's test this. Mm. It reminds me of my childhood, this. Yeah, well, you're going to like this one, because it's sweet. Yeah. It doesn't uh, suit me, really. I'm not very No, fun. you're not a sweet yeah. wine drinker, no, but I, I, I like love it. it. I love Mavrum of Daphne. Yeah. Yeah, to finish the meal. Well, I really enjoy that, Stuart, but unfortunately, I have to leave all this behind. I'm sure he'll finish it, and I have to get back into the kitchen and do some more cooking. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make paklava now. I think everybody knows what paklava is, especially if you visited Greece or any other uh, Middle Eastern country. Now, for paklava, you always need syrup. Uh, it's very syrupy, and very sticky, but delicious. You need four cups of sugar to two cups of plain water. Put it in a little casserole or a saucepan. Bring it to the boil until the sugar dissolves, and then you add some spices, you put some cinnamon sticks and some cloves just to flavour it and make it very Greek. And also you need a little bit of lemon juice, half a lemon juice, that's to stop the syrup crystallising it. And also you add some rose water for flavour again and a little bit of honey. And you simmer the syrup for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I've got one that I made earlier, look, isn't it gorgeous? Right. We need filo pastry. We need two packets of filo pastry, actually. It's 400 grams on each one. We also need some nuts. In here, I've got some chopped almonds, about eight ounces of chopped almonds, which is 225 grams, the same amount in pistachio nuts. Now, you can use other nuts. It doesn't have to be pistachio or almonds. You can use walnuts. Also, we need to add some sugar, some dry breadcrumbs, and some ground cinnamon, and the butter is to brush our filo pastry. Okay, I'll show you how to prepare the filling. Very easy again. The good thing about Greek cooking is so easy, but very tasty. Right, you add both of your nuts in there. You add your breadcrumbs, your sugar. We've got about two ounces of sugar in here, and you only need about a tablespoon of ground cinnamon. Mix them all in together. And then I like to add a few drops of rose water for that exotic flavour. That's it. And I feel it is ready. Now always cut your filo pastry a little bit bigger than your our oven dish, your oven tray. And brush the tray with melted butter really well and add one sheet of pastry at a time or two and brush it with melted butter. Okay, we're reaching near to the end of our first packet of filo pastry. And I'm going to add half the mixture of these nuts now. Just spread them around like this. Like that. That's it. And then I'm going to add another two to three pieces of filo pastry. Again, not forgetting to brush it with butter. It's nicer actually to have a thicker brush. I've got one, but I couldn't find it. Here we are. Do that. You have to be quite gentle because the nuts may come through the filo pastry. 
And I'm ready to put the other half of the nuts now. Here we are. And a lot of people like to use oil, but I hate using oil in, uh, in paklava. I think you do need the butter taste. It tastes much nicer. Here we are. And now we're ready to use the other packet of filo pastry to cover the, paste, the, the whole paklava, to cover the nuts. And then I'm ready to add the rest of the filo pastry. <laughs> The last pastry. It's been hard work, hasn't it? Okay, all I need to do now is trim the paklava. So you can do those with the kitchen scissors. Now, this is the most important thing, cutting paklava. Now, you cut it all the way through, down the middle, all right? And then you cut the two halves again. So you've got about... I think three inches wide. That's it. And now I've got to cut it into diamond shapes. Here we are. Our paklava is cut. Now we need to what more multi butter on top. Here we are. It's probably not good for us, but the paklava needs it. And also you need to sprinkle a little bit of cold water. That's to stop the pasty, pastry curling up when you're cooking it. So all we need to do now is put it in the oven. It needs to go in a medium oven for about one hour. So I'll do that now. And after one hour, it looks like this. Now we need to add our syrup, the one we made earlier, do you remember? Like that. And you need to do this few times until all the paklava soaks the syrup. And you can actually leave it for half an hour and then come back to it and add a bit more. And it's nice to decorate paklava with some nuts on top. And it's best to eat it the following day, like with <laughs> anything Greek. Have you got any room for this, sir? No. <laughs> <laughs> no room. As usually, too much food. Table's creaking a little. No, I better tell you what we have around our table. Well, we've got typical Greek and Cypriot food here. We've got a nice Greek salad here, mm -hmm. right, which is mixed vegetables with feta cheese and black olives, which you, you all love, don't you? We do. Also, we've got, it's a bit like leftigo, this, which is roast lamb, and potatoes, isn't this, dear? With oh, the you, you only put lemon. Yeah, juice? I put a bit of lemon juice on top olive and oil. olive oil, oregano, salt and pepper. Very simple, but the secret to this is to cook it for a long time. Slowly. Yes, yeah, slowly for about three hours, and it's delicious. I don't know anybody that does it like that. Yeah, very and tasty. And it is, isn't it? Mm. And here we've got dolmades, stuffed vine leaves. Now they're stuffed with rice, minced lamb and um, herbs, lots of herbs, dill and parsley and all that. And they're gorgeous, but you can have them as vegetarian. In here we've got spanagobita, which is spinach and feta cheese pastry. Again, very popular all over in Greece. Now Tara, who goes out with Solos, my son, is a vegetarian, so I made that specially for her. Right? And in here we've got... Chef Dalias, yes. made by my mother. She's the best chef cook in Chef Dalias. <laughs> now, Chef Dalias are made with pork, minced pork, yeah. and lots of parsley, isn't it, Mum? And uh, lots Onion. of chopped onions. Mm. It's spicy. Yeah. yeah. So it's a Cypriot sausage, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. And it's nice it's when you're doing a barbecue, isn't it, to mm. put it on the charcoal. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but do join us again next time. Discover more mouth-watering dishes from around the world next Tuesday at 10. 
And if you're into growing your own fruit and veg, you'll find lots of tips plus ways to cook them next when good life takes you into a cook's garden.